Hello, I'm Dr. Mohit Kara, Professor of Urology at Baylor College of Medicine. Today I'll be discussing the diagnosis and management of Peyronie's disease. Peyronie's disease has been described over centuries. One of the first descriptions of Peyronie's disease was in the 1500s. It wasn't until 1743 when Francois de la Peyronie described this condition in five men. The prevalence of Peyronie's disease is actually quite higher than most think. We know that roughly 7% of all men have Peyronie's disease. How does Peyronie's disease occur? It's believed that it's repetitive trauma to the penile tissue. When these patients experience this trauma, it's impaired tissue response to the injury, it forms a scar, and there is a penile curvature. The best example I give my patients is this. If I take a balloon and I put a piece of duct tape on this long balloon, and I blow the balloon up, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to curve in the direction of the duct tape. Some of the treatment options is to remove the duct tape or to place an equal piece of duct tape on the opposite side so the penis is once again straight. There's some associated conditions with Peyronie's disease. Many of them may have Dupuytren contracture, which is a scarring in the palm. Some patients may have plantar fascial contractures, which are scarring in the soles of the feet. And some may also have scarring within the ear, which is called tympanosclerosis. Where do you find these scars? Most of the scars, roughly 70 to 80% of them, are located on the top of the penile tissue or on the dorsum. So roughly 20% of the patients will have a scar on the side of the penis, and again, that's why most patients will curve up because the majority of the scar is on the top of the penis. So when the penis is erect, it will curve in the upward direction. It's important to also realize that many men who have Peyronie's disease will also have erectile dysfunction. In fact, most of these men will experience erectile dysfunction prior to developing Peyronie's disease. Up to 50% of men with Peyronie's disease will have erectile dysfunction. You have to also realize that this condition can have a severe psychological impact on many men. They feel disfigured and it causes them anxiety and that in itself can cause erectile dysfunction. It's very important to take a detailed history when a patient comes in with Peyronie's disease. Do they have any other comorbid conditions such as diabetes which has been associated with Peyronie's disease? Have they been treated by any other provider? Have they used any other medications or injections for this condition? Are they able to get an erection? It's important to realize that it's, there's no point in making the penis straight if a patient is not able to get an erection. I also like to ask about when did it start? How long have you had Peyronie's disease? How severe is the curvature? As well, how long have they had these symptoms? It's very important to get a detailed history. It's also important to assess the curvature uh, in the office. We insist on patients getting a penile ultrasound in the office where we inject the penis with a dilating agent. And we're able to assess the curvature. We measure the curvature. We also measure the penile plaque size and we measure the blood flow going in and out of the penis. This gives us a baseline of where we're starting and it gives us an idea how to treat the patient and get the best outcome. If you come to my office, you will receive a questionnaire called the PDQ, which is the most commonly used questionnaire for Peyronie's disease. The full version involves 15 questions. Uh, the smaller version here is six questions assessing your level of bother. If a patient has a curvature of the penis when he's erect, but he's not bothered by the symptoms, then it wouldn't make sense to treat that patient. If a patient has even a slight curvature of the penis and is extremely bothered by their conditions, then it would make sense to treat that patient. You should understand the physiology of what's occurring when a patient has Peyronie's disease. There are two phases. There's the active phase and there's the quiescent phase or the stable phase. The active phase is typically about 12 months from the onset of the condition. The active phase is associated with painful erections and what I teach the residents is the 15-40-45 rule. In other words, 15% of patients will have an improvement in their condition during that first year. 40% of patients will have no change at all. And 45% of patients will actually get worse during that first year. This is the phase where you're allowed to give medical therapy. You should not operate on a patient in the active phase. 
In the quiescent phase or the stable phase, the curve is no longer curving, it's stable. And these patients typically do not have pain with an erection. It's important to realize that up to a third of patients in the active phase may also not have pain with an erection. There are two ways to think about treatment options. The first is medical therapy, and the second is surgical therapy. And I'd like to discuss these briefly. Medical therapy involves three arms, injections, penile stretching devices, and oral or topical agents. I don't want patients to think about oral or topical agents as a useful therapy because m none of them have been shown to be effective in any randomized placebo-controlled trial to improve Peyronie's disease. The new Peyronie's guidelines do allow for NSAIDs or anti-inflammatories if any medications are to be used. But we do commonly use injections and penile stretching devices, which I'll discuss. The only FDA-approved treatment for Peyronie's disease is collagenase or Zyflex, which are injections that are placed into the plaque or the scar tissue to help dissolve that plaque. The way it works is this. A patient comes into the office and receives an injection into the plaque. They will wait one to three days, receive another injection into the plaque. One to three days later, they'll have a modeling procedure, either at home or in the office. Then they'll wait six weeks and they'll repeat this cycle. They repeat this cycle for a total of four cycles or eight injections. If you look at the improvement in curvature, roughly 32 to 35 percent of improvement in curvature after the completion of the cycles. I think this is important because many patients think that when they get this injection, it will make the penis completely straight. And I say no, it will significantly improve your curvature by 35 percent, but it will not make the penis completely straight. This can also have side effects. 0.5 percent of patients can have a corporal rupture or an injury to the penile tissue. Up to 0.9 percent of patients can have significant penile bruising and pain. And roughly less than 4 percent of patients can have severe penile hematomas. There's also penile traction devices. There are penile stretching devices. It's important to realize that these are off-label use, and these are not FDA approved for the treatment of Peyronie's disease. Now, these devices typically have to be worn anywhere from two to six hours a day, and typically over a six-month period. Some men, uh, quite frankly, don't have the time or the patience to wear these penile stretching devices, and many of them will use a vacuum erection device uh, for anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes a day. There are three options, surgical options, for Peyronie's disease. Uh, one is the penile prosthesis, which is where we surgically implant a prosthetic device into the penile tissue. This is a great option for men who have erectile dysfunction and Peyronie's disease. The other two surgical options are a penile plication, where we place sutures in the opposite location of where the patient is curving to straighten out the curve. And the other surgical option is incision or excision and grafting, where I cut out the plaque and I put a patch or a graft in its place. When patients present with Peyronie's disease to my office, I have a protocol. Uh, when the initial evaluation involves a penile ultrasound, as I mentioned earlier, to assess the curve, penile plaque, and penile blood flow, we do start certain medications, pentoxifiline, which is off-label use. There may be some case reports demonstrating benefit. We do use anti-inflammatories, and we do use daily Cialis. We do uh, check patients' serum testosterone levels. It is my belief that low testosterone can be a contributor to uh, Peyronie's disease. In patients who are symptomatic uh, and have low testosterone, we may consider uh, testosterone therapy. We use penile stretching devices or a vacuum erection device, and in appropriate candidates, we do start as Zyflex injections. After six months, we reevaluate patients with another penile ultrasound, particularly if they've started Zyflex injections. We continue with the medications and the penile stretching device, but at this point, we may consider surgical options or consider experimental protocols that we have at Baylor College of Medicine. So in summary, Peyronie's disease affects roughly 7% of all men. Medical treatment options include medications, penile traction devices, and Zyflex injections. Surgical options should be reserved for men within the quiescent phase. 
and men with poor erectile function and Peyronie's disease should be considered for a penile implant. Thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoyed this video.